Well, I'm really happy to say I'm here with my good mate, Pete Switzer. Usually I'm on the other side of the microphone with Pete. He's usually <laughs> interviewing me. And I'm not actually going to do, do an interview with Pete. Pete's an economist. He's a good mate of mine. He's someone I respect highly. Um, and we're going to have, just have a mag about what's going on out there in the economy. First thing I want to talk to Pete about is he's a good share market analyst. He understands the value of stocks. Right now I see a, a dysfunction between what's going on in the share market from its lows to where it is now. The, the, some stocks are just steaming ahead, mate. Steaming ahead, way, yeah. way ahead. Yeah. yeah. How does that sort of fit into what the predictions are about the economy and or the so-called mixed messages out there? What okay. do you reckon? There's multiple answers I can give you on this, Mark, um, but I think there's two major ones worth considering to, to explain why this market's bounced back. And, you know, with my Switzer report, I actually have been saying that it's likely we're going to bounce back. Uh, I'm not quite sure if there'll be another leg down. It'll depend on another curveball. This came from a curveball called coronavirus, right? And when it came along and government said, oh, we're going to close down economies and lock people up, well, people thought, this has never happened before in our lifetime. And so what happened was the stock market just sold off on uncertainty. No one could work out what was going to happen to the various companies. Remember, all share prices are a function of what are the profits in the future. You close down an economy, you lock up consumers and businesses and whatever, what can you expect? So that drop, America, 30, uh, us 38%, America about 35%, stock market down. That was not knowing what was going on. Is that highs to lows? 30 exactly. 40%. Yeah, that's right. And then the market was shocked by what governments and reserve central banks decided to do. Throw an enormous amount of ammunition to try and rescue the economies. And they knew they had to do it because they never closed down economies before. They didn't close it down with the GFC. They didn't even close it down with the Spanish flu. So this is the first time they'd really done something like this that could even be, you know, we, we heard hibernation for six months or something like that. Well, then how the hell do you reconcile all that with all the bad news we keep hearing about the uh, demise? Know, but, but that's only good for them. Right. All right. Now, un until this week, Australian banks, these are, and I knew those banks very well, Mark, but these are still for the best banks in the world. Whether the Home yep. Royal Commission said they're a bunch of scumbags or what, it didn't matter. They perform the yeah. best. And, and, and on the international tests during the GFC, they, they were in the top 10 banks of the world yep. of before. Yep. I think the last one I saw in the top 50, they were in the top 50, probably in the 30s or something like that. But they're very good banks. Now, and saying, in terms, that's in terms of profitability and uh, and rating how yeah. they're rated internationally yeah. and and the, and the quality of their balance sheet yep. who wants to invest in a bank that disappears a lot of american banks can disappear because they're so small in the balance sheet and there are 10,000 banks in america yeah exactly right and so what was a i think a symbolic problem for um, our market or was, was the fact that our greatest companies whether you like it or not the banks were really struggling now it's partly understood the government recruited them to help out. So they're deferring loans and they're giving businesses loans at, at lower rates and all that sort of stuff. So they've risked the, themselves for the sake of the country, therefore the share price wasn't down. But you know what, I don't know if you noticed this, this week... Yeah, I have watched it. NAB share price is up 23%. Now. ANZ's up some ridiculous yeah. number too. Well, they're all 17% today. I actually worked it before I came this morning. Seven. <laughs> yep. NAB's up another six. 23% in one week. Now, what was the only thing, news item, that was a, a bit of a reference to maybe how bad this problem of a coronavirus is. The big one, JobKeeper. Mm. We were supposed to have six million on JobKeeper. Now we find this. I can't believe this. Though. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe that yeah. one bit of news. There's only five million or whatever the number is. Yeah. It's a lot less anyway. Mm. Half the amount of money the government's going to spend on JobKeeper yeah. is now available not yeah. to be borrowed. But, but, but Marcus, you know what's a reference to? All right, it could be a reference to how stupid Australia's they can't fill the form in. But I don't think that's the case at all. I think the fact is you can't get JobKeeper for your employees unless your revenue is down 30% or more, right? No, good example, Yellow Big Road. We can't get it. Yeah. I, 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 we don't have the 30% reduction in yeah, revenue. Exactly right. And so, therefore, there's a lot of businesses that haven't been as badly affected as was presumed the, the case yeah. when someone said, because that six million figure was a guess. Mm. They would have looked at the first, probably first few weeks of. Um, in, uh, forms being filled and sent to the ATO, and they would have been the most desperate. But other ones who, and then, oh, by the way, some companies did well in March, 
but they knew they were going to be really crappy in April. So they have to prove to the ATO that they were going to be affected badly by this. If it's not as bad as the government expected and therefore we feel a bit relieved, mm. are you now saying is we're going to have a V-shaped recovery? Oh, I, I, well, we've already seen a V-shape on the stock market. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm trying I, to reconcile I, yeah, the two of that. I think Mark is going to be, I, I hate to quote, a good mate of ours, Chris Joy, he's, he's pioneered the idea of a view-shaped recovery. So first one up, a bounce, yep. and then it takes a while to go to the next level. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think Does the, he say back up to the top of the, from where it stopped? Oh, yeah, but you, 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 you don't put a date on it because you, you don't know how long it will take. But I've, I, seen, I've seen Chris's modelling. Yeah. I've seen the, the analysis as yeah. he did. It's, it's very technical, as you would expect yeah. from Chris's um, yeah. environment. He uh, does that so no one can understand him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he'll go and talk uh, to you <laughs> so that you, we don't understand him. But the, yeah, sure. the point is he does know. Yeah. And if you're investing with him, usually you do pretty well if yeah. you go through these periods. So what do you, what do you, think, what, yeah. what do you think it is? Uh, uh, so, so, uh, so look, remember this. The IMF, who people like you and yep. other things, are great forecasters. Mm. But like all economists, they get it right, they get it wrong. When they first saw this, and, and the Reserve Bank agreed with them, they thought Australia would contract by about 6.7% this year and then rebound. Explain what you mean by that contract GDP. All right. So the GDP is the valuation of all goods and services produced in the country. So imagine if we, just for simplicity, it was $100. So it was the value of all production. It's probably $100 billion, if you like. If the next year it ends up being $102 billion, well, we've grown the economy by 2%. Hey, how easy is that? Mm. But most people don't understand those. Okay. So, so the, the Reserve Bank and uh, IMF said, well, if it's 100, it's going to drop down to 94. Drops by 6, 6 billion, 6 billion over 100 is 6.4. 6, 6, yep. But they then thought 2021 would be a rebound year of 6.6% 6. 6 as well. So, therefore, there's always been an expectation that because this was such a sudden collapse of the economy and the stock market, there would be a sudden rebound as well. Yep. And that, now, when the government started talking about six months hibernation and Italy was devastated, the numbers got pushed up to a 10% contraction of the economy, unemployment going to 10%, that was the worst case scenario. And that's why the stock market was really sold off. Mark, I think... You know, the smarties behind fund managers are just doing their numbers and saying, well, that 10% number we're factoring into our models is now too much. we better pull it back. And when you do that, you start looking at companies' uh, potential profits and say, well, their profit was going to be shit, excuse the French, yeah, yeah. on a 10% correct contraction, but on a 6% contraction or a 7% contraction, their profits will be better. We better buy this company. We, uh, we've oversold. And that's what we're seeing. People, uh, uh, smarties, doing their numbers. Now, by the way, it's not just smarties. A lot of normal investors, long-term investors, learnt from the GFC, Mark. CBA got down to $27. It was 60 bucks before the GFC. It went down to $27. Whenever I was interviewed during the, the, the GFC period, I'd say, look, stock markets rebound by 30 to 80% the first year after a crash. And then the people on radio or TV would say to me, well, what would you buy? Well, I just play it safe. I said, buy the banks because you know, they're, they're such solid companies. If you bought the CB at $27 before the crash, your yield, your dividend return was relative to the price. Yeah, was yeah. over 17%. Which is an unbelievable return. Know, in terms of deposits, one and a half percent. I was going to say, when you, when you compare to what, what you get if you put your money in the same bank just on deposit. Exactly right. As opposed to buying the stock. Exactly. So, okay, but what do you think? Okay, V, yeah. what, what is Chris Okay, we're it? rebounding out. And it's, a, it's a nice rebound. It will then take a while to, because, by the way, There'll be some companies who say, oh, you know, all these people went home. I don't know if I, if I need them all to be in the office. So landlords will get a bit of challenge by people trying to reduce the size of their office. Then there'll be some businesses who say, all these guys who are on and, and girls who are on $300,000 a year, well, things are a bit tougher now. Let's knock them down to 250. So there's going to be a reduction in, in uh, salaries. Yep. And therefore, that will knock down the enthusiasm for them to pay high prices at auction. So there's going to be that adjustment process, Mark. And, and, and what I found over the time that even when the economy rebounds quickly, unemployment is a really slow lag improver. So it might take some time and therefore confidence will be affected. So all that boom mentality 
And you employ people. You know, sometimes when you have to get a good pe- a person, you have to pay extraordinary amounts to get them. Well, you you won't have to pay those extraordinary amounts. And that's and that's. Well, well can I ask this? But, yeah. but, okay, but do you th- do you see going forward? We, you know, we've been uh, sort of bobbling along. What five point one? You know, mm. Reserve Bank will like see four point six, but five point one percent unemployed. Mm. Let's not talk about participation mm. rates. They're underemployed no. for a moment because most people don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Do you see a reset around six percent f- for a long period of time? Yeah, I, I think we could go as high as seven or eight. Because the numbers you will be reading will be numbers for uh, May and June, which are still going to be crappy. But once you get into July, the September quarter, things will start to improve. What about the expectation of governments spending money? And before I go, uh, our government's spending a lot of money, as we know. And it's, yeah. it's not the $130 billion now. It's $65 billion or some other number because of the, the error in terms of the, what the ATA was gathering. But mm. irrespective of that, it's a lot of money. Do you think that this country still needs the government to keep on job keeper. If, if I'm the Prime Minister, I'm, I'm Scott Morrison, or I'm yeah. Josh Frydenberg right now, what would you tell me to do in relation to job keeper? Uh, well, they've, they've actually got in train a June review of job keeper. They've been trying to do their own independent analysis of what's going on, but I think they may well also put it on business owners. Okay, you told us you weren't going to do well. What is your position now? If you still think you're well behind in terms of revenue, and you're entitled to get JobKeeper, reapply. Right. That would be, and I think some businesses, like for, for, for example, if I go to a cafe in the CBD, and by end of June, everyone's back in the CBD, well then you, you wouldn't have any reason to ask for JobKeeper. How, okay, how would you? Apart do from paying catch up from all the losses. How will you defeat then the, 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 what I hear out in the streets, this? Not how you defeat it? I, I'm not suggesting you deal with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, well at least balance it up. Yeah. Come September, everyone's got to start paying their mortgage back because the hardship relief is finished. Yeah. Uh, JobKeeper probably going to be done. Yeah. It may not be extended. Unless you're in the travel industry. Correct. Those sort of special workers. There'll be some will special be- places. Yeah. Job seeker may well come back down to the number it was prior yeah. to the doubling. Yeah, um, or, um, um, it has uh, to because some yep. casuals won't go back to work because of Landlords that. are going to expect rent. Yep. How do, how, what do we say then about economy at that point i mean we well, won't go back to where we were before there's no right. way because the, the, the economy won't be growing as fast well it will be growing as fast but it's catching up so if yeah. you average it over the two years to be if it's six percent down and six percent up it's really zero over two years isn't it on that yeah, yeah, average yeah. so you do you reckon two quarters of re, uh, negative growth right? two quarters of negative growth yeah i think i think the technical recession technical recession so 2021 starting to look okay yeah yeah but certain sectors will be struggling and you're right mark There'll be, there'll be battles with landlords. There'll be people trying to uh, make up for their home loans. But remember this. A lot of our home loan interest rates are unbelievably low. You and I can remember 17% home loans. I was paying it, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, that's right. And so I, I think, look, the adjustment process w- will mean that we won't get back to a normal kind of economy until probably 2022. But that doesn't mean it's a disaster. No. That's what you're yeah, saying. That's right. it, it won't be a disaster. No. And some businesses and some sectors will be doing fantastically well. And that's how you reconcile because you're saying the, the fund managers and all the smarties, the analysts, the people who actually sit and do the work on mm. it and put data behind and do the mathematics around it, they're saying this won't be as bad as we think. Mm. Therefore, it's time to get back into the market. They don't really know exactly what time to get back in the market. They're saying it's yeah. it, these stocks present value. Yeah. Certain stocks present value. Let's get back in the market. They all come to the same conclusion pretty much at the same time. Yeah. That builds momentum. Mm. And by definition, they have to have the stocks in their portfolio. So it just builds the stock price up. It's not it's not a fundamental thing. They're not no. saying, you the know. The prices could, could be too high now. 100%. But, it, but it's more momentum driven to some extent. They've got to have it in the portfolio. They can't, they've got to have some ANZ, some NAB and some BHP yeah. and some Rio. Blah, blah, blah. The economy is going to be okay. Yeah. We're going it'll to be cre- okay. It'll creep back to, to goodness. It'll come back okay mm. for by hook or by crook. And the second thing is you've got to hang out with people who can help you out. Mm. And if you want to hang out, the best way, the quickest way, the most efficient way and the cheapest way today is just by listening to people online. Mm. I want to thank my good mate Peter Switzer for coming in. Like He's not only a great economist and a great economic commentator just generally, he's good on small business, he's a great financial planning guy, but he's, a, he's entertaining. He's got plenty of energy. He says it as it is. And what he does, he summarises everything he reads and puts it into nice, simple sentences for you. So if you want to hang out with mentors, Come listen to Pete. Come listen to me. Watch us both. We'd be happy to have you. See you guys. Thanks, Pete. Mark, great to be with you. And it's good to talk to someone who's a Roosters supporter as well. Go the Roosters. (laughs)